I've been absent for the last couple of days because I've been fixing my car. Uh, the car failed inspection, so I had to fix and I did that in, essentially on the ground in four different weather seasons. It was kind of quite an interesting experience. And while I was fixing it, something else broke, which is very typical. So I had to uh, I had to attend that as well. And well, now the car is inspectable. I don't even know if that's a word. I don't know if inspectable is a word, but if it ain't, I made it up. If it if inspectable actually is a word, um, I didn't make it up. I'm just still I'm still gonna use it every time I fix something. I'm gonna say, well, the thing is now inspectable. My friend wanted Hyrax OS on his computer, right? My friend wanted Hyrax OS in his computer, and I was like, okay, cool, it's um, Flash uh, an ISO, and it was a pretty, it was a pretty old machine running Windows 10. That thing was built from essentially lift over spare parts that he received, so I, I do believe he got the PC for free, but it was a pretty alright old office PC. And he wants Hyrax OS in his thing. So I flashed the ISO and we actually did manage to get it to boot into um, Hyrax OS without issues. So uh, we, we confirmed that the thing could actually boot and the thing actually had a pretty alright uh, AMD graphics card. It was like a 2 gigabyte graphics card. So you ain't gonna be grinding, you know, um, AAA games on the thing. And it doesn't matter because again, he all he all only wanted to use the thing for stuff like watching videos, browsing the internet. Said, okay, cool. Hyrax OS might be a good solution for you. And he wanted it because he actually kind of liked the whole setup of uh, you know the UI and the fast boot times and all that sort of stuff. Plus, it was he thought it would, I guess he thought it was pretty intuitive. So we went in and we tried to dual boot the thing, and essentially we. I figured out, hey, you think I actually got multiple partitions, and I was like, let's just, you want to merge the partitions so you have a little bit more tribe space, because again, he wanted 500 gigabytes for like half of the drive reserved for Windows 10 and half the drive reserved for Hyrex OS, and when we got in and was about to do boot the thing, we had no issues, but we didn't have enough space. We went back to Windows, we went back to Windows, reformatted his partition and all of a sudden we couldn't boot into Hyrex OS and it was like what the frick is going on he kept throwing errors and warnings and doing function errors and stack call errors I was like what the frick is going on here and then we spent like the good amount of 12 hours diagnosing the problem because he's, he's pretty tech savvy himself he, you know, he knows a few things about getting things to work and he was equally as confused as confused as I were, I was even more confused than he were. Um, so when then I was looking around, I was like, "Okay, you know what? For the first time in I don't know a week, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna search for potential issues." And that issue that we specifically received, typically speaking, is caused by Windows auto enabling fast boot. Windows detected, first of all, we inserted the thing and we, we got into Windows and all of a sudden Windows for whatever reason decided to wipe or format um, the Hyrex OS um, USB thumb drive for whatever reason, we don't know why, it just like Windows just decided to reformat the Hyrex USB right, the Hyrex USB. Windows just reformatted a USB thumb drive without us asking to format, but it did that. I was like, okay, cool. You know, and I'm, I'm just gonna flash a new version. Um, then, for whatever reason, next thing that happens is yes, it in apparently, and it took us 12 hours to figure out. It decided to auto enable. Windows 10 decided to auto enable fast boot, and fast boot was the reason we couldn't um, log in or boot into Hyrex OS. So I was like. What if we just disconnect? What if we just disconnect the hard drive and try, try to just boot in uh, to Hyrex OS from the flash drive without any hard drives being present? Nope, it didn't work because it, lo it locked down the BIOS. It locked down the firmware on the BIOS. So essentially, in order to address that problem, we would need Windows 10. We would need to find a way to essentially disable fast boot. But then we ran into a slightly different problem. 
the computer the version of windows 10 was in a language we didn't really understand well we kind of understood it but i was i, would, I didn't un they called computers something else right they can call the computer something else and i i didn't know what, how to essentially disable fast boot i looked for it i couldn't get we couldn't disable fast boot you were talking about two people who's pre both pretty tech savvy that couldn't figure out how to properly disable fast boot so we could boot into hyrex os which is a custom made linux solution for everybody who wants to switch from windows to linux or at least try linux I was like, why did Windows 10, right after an update, decide to make it impossible to boot into, well, most Linux distributions after an update? And here's the worst thing, the thing didn't even freaking update. So we tried to reinstall Windows and all kinds of things. And apparently speaking, Windows 10 decided to bring it the firmware because of fast boot. We didn't ask it to do it. It did it out of its own will. I was like... I had to fix my car, right? And I had to fix my car. He had to leave. None of us had none of us had time to deal with it. It took us twelve hours, and we had nowhere. So we could boot into the thumb drive before we opened up Windows Ten. But because we opened up Windows Ten, and and for whatever reason, my friend decided to update his Windows Ten machine because he thought that was safe to do. It decided to enable fast boot and bring the BIOS in the way where you couldn't boot into the USB thumb drive. And I told him, hey, that might be their AI playing tricks on you because it detected a Linux USB. Because it is a Linux, it is a cosmic Linux solution. I was like, the Linux solution has been dual booted with Windows 10 and Windows 11 before. Okay. It's not like, it's not like this is the first time uh, Hyrex OS has been dual booted. It has been dual booted by a few people. Uh, generally speaking, once you dual boot the thing, you don't have any sort of issues. Now, all of a sudden, I'm hearing um, Windows 11 decides to remove Grub, right, which is the Linux um, slash whatever bootloader, out of its own free will. Windows 10 just enables fast boot and all kinds of different things, so you can boot into a Linux USB because Microsoft knows people are trying to switch. The most stubborn people I know want, the most stubborn people I know see something like Hyrex and it's like, you know what, yeah, I actually kind of want to switch. I don't want to deal with my uh, Windows uh, 10 anymore or Windows 11. I don't want to upgrade to Windows 11. If the most stubborn people that I know, and they are very stubborn, if they say, I don't want to switch, they ain't going to switch. You can't convince them otherwise. Even those people want to switch. And those people want to switch to Hyrex OS. And now Windows is starting to bring not just Hyrex OS, but we're talking pretty much all Linux distributions is becoming a nightmare to dual boot because Microsoft, for whatever reason, has decided to go on and make it as difficult as possible spree. I'm making this video to just tell you that if you want to, if you want to, let's say, dual boot pretty much any, uh, not just Hyrex OS, but pretty much any Linux distribution, disable fast boot and disable all the other things because uh, Windows keeps re-enabling it even though you tell it not to it will properly do it as a case of my friend's computer who that the uh, computer works per work perfectly fine and I know it's like it's it's I guess you can consider it glued together from left over shelf of the shelf pads that are pretty old it doesn't matter the point is, this is not the first time I hear something like this. Now we got to experience it ourselves where Windows it would find some sort of way to prohibit people from installing another operating system on their computer. It's just another example. They are actively doing it. That was an example. I actually got pretty shocked and I literally said, that is freaking disgusting. And he agreed. It is disgusting. We didn't tell Windows to enable fast boot. We didn't tell Windows to en enable secure boot. It did that, Windows did that in the BIOS, in the firmware of the motherboard. When it, did, it does that, you pretty much either, like, there is one thing you can do, you can flash the firmware, and I specifically told them, I'm not going to flash firmware. If anything happens when I try to flash the firmware and that goes wrong, it is game over uh, EEPROM. I mean, you, you don't want that to happen. You don't want a game over EEPROM scenario. 
it's it's game over firmware it's either game over eprom or whatever they hate to call it now you don't want that to happen that's why i specifically say to people i'm not gonna flash the firmware unless the computer is physically bring to a point where it's unusable otherwise i'm not gonna do it i do not like flashing bios firmware i've never been a big fan because if anything screws up it is game over go buy a new uh, motherboard and simply speaking go buy a new computer because something else might happen but windows put us in a scenario where the only logical thing was to would be to completely flash the firmware completely just flash it and that's not something i'm comfortable doing especially when i don't know the pc and it's basically because the pc was working but now he's got to suffer with windows 10 on the thing or upgrade well yeah he's got to suffer with windows 10 because he can't downgrade and he can't upgrade because microsoft made it very hard to downgrade to windows 7 and they made it almost impossible to upgrade to windows 11 on computers that doesn't have a tpm 2.0 chip which it doesn't it's an old office pc my question is why can't we why can't we we couldn't probably freaking disable fast boot and that was literally the biggest problem i've ever encountered when it came to installing anything linux related they don't want you to that's what i'm saying they're now bringing, they are now indirectly bringing people's PCs so they can't install Linux to keep you in the Windows ecosystem. And that's why I'm making this video. The reason I'm making this video is to tell people it doesn't matter what you pick, consider switching to Linux uh, before it's too late. Because right now they are active, proactively trying to make it as difficult as possible. I would never imagine how hard it would be to install linux on a co-pilot certified pc in the future that's gonna be a freaking nightmare it's gonna be a freaking nightmare yep they are actively locking down people's computers so they can install another operating system microsoft is actively doing that and as i know it's time to end the video i just thought i wanted to make a video about it because again you know i've been busy fixing a vehicle and i thought you know what that could be some somewhat of an interesting video to me because I just got I just got home and again I am pretty tired. I thought it was um, I, I thought it would be a good idea to essentially tell people about this new issue we have in in the world of computing where Microsoft is now proactively locking down computers so people cannot install another operating system on it. I'm not just talking about Linux distributors, I'm not talking about all of them. all of the operating systems that you can download. Microsoft trying to make it as freaking difficult for you as possible because they don't want you to switch if you do boot linux with uh, windows and you lock in to windows 11 it might bring you entire com it might bring you inside bootloader so you only can use windows 11. this means you dual boot and then all of a sudden you lock into windows 11 and then the next thing you know is now all of a sudden you cannot access anything but windows and they are going to make it as difficult as possible to get back into your Linux distribution because they removed the grub bootloader. You're not gonna log into no damn Linux distribution without your grub bootloader. It's not gonna happen. But they're doing that. I've heard it from I think it was Rob Braxman that went over it. He's very well informed on this whole uh you know what Microsoft is doing. He's um He's been in the base for many, many, many years. I think he was an old Microsoft um, engineer. I'm not 100% sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was, and he's talking about it. He's been very vocal about his dislike of Windows 11. But yeah, they're actually actively, actively proactively trying to prevent people from uh, installing Linux by the looks of things. They don't want you to leave. They want you to be stuck in their AI-generated ecosystem. And uh, if you don't want to, well, better hurry up and switch to something else because in the future it might become too difficult for people. It's always going to be possible, but it might become too difficult for the average person unless you know how to you know program and i, I think it's i think it's absurd that you gotta learn how to program in a programming language just to install an operating system on your computer because that's apparently uh, what microsoft wants that you gotta learn how to program something like c or c plus plus in order to install an operating system that's freaking ridiculous that's the most outrageous thing i've ever heard 
I had to learn, you know, I, I, I wanted to learn C++ and C because I wanted to make video games. So that's another thing. But if you just want to use a computer, I don't think it should be a requirement for people to know, you know, uh, C and C++ so they can freaking unbring their firmware. What kind of sick, twisted, inverse, perverted logic is that where or you want to do that? Well, you got to reprogram your EEPROM. Oh, you gotta reprogram your TPM 2.0 chip, and there are certain things you can't reprogram because uh, reprogramming that thing would be illegal. You didn't ask for a TPM chip. Well, unfortunately, you probably were forced to buy a computer with a TPM chip because you're one of the latest and greatest, but that's another point for another video. We didn't ask for a TPM chip. Nobody freaking wants a TPM chip. If you platform's security, if you operating system security is so bad, you need to install spyware chips on motherboards, you need to make a new operating system. You need to make a new operating system, Microsoft, because your operating system sucks. Windows is known for malware. It's known for spyware. It's known for bloat. Fix your operating system. I don't think the Windows NT kernel is going to be able to stand the test of time. It is the, it is not one of the newest, you know, kernels around. It's very, very new compared to Unix and, and the Linux kernel. Mm, it came a little bit after Linux kernel. So yeah, Linux kernel older. Unix kernel is much older. It's a much more well-proven, well-trusted kernel. The Windows NT kernel is, just sucks. Clearly, it just sucks, otherwise you wouldn't have to insert TPM 2.0 chips into people's motherboards. Unless it doesn't suck, you're just trying to spy on people. And now you're locking, now, now you're trying to lock people into a sick perverted ecosystem. Screw it, forget it. People don't want it, Microsoft, and you should lo stop trying to prohibit people from installing another operating system. They are allowed to install another operating system if they want to. I'm not going to sit here and tell people what to install. I'm just going to say install whatever you want. But people should be allowed to install another operating system. I knew that was going to start to happen just before I switched to Linux, and that's why I hurried creating Hyrex OS so it could help as many people as possible switch over. And I was right in the money. Now they are f proactively trying to do whatever they can to prevent people from installing an operating system besides Windows. And as I know it's time to end the video, tell me what you think. Have you ever been locked out of your computer by Microsoft before? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I am the Super Hyrex, and I'm out.